despite appearances, this is not a piece of fine jewelry. Um, it's, it's actual function. Um, it, it is a functional device rather than a, uh, a beautiful device. And it, it's not beautiful. Um, this is what it does. And its whole job in life is, if I can get it back off, is to keep this little plastic ring from rattling. I don't know. And um, it, it's been pointed out that really, um, and the, the problem, uh, the problem started with in, in the car. And it turns out there's sort of a resonance between the bottle and that little rattly ring uh, around highway speeds. And I would find myself with a bottle and a rattle and I was driving and there wasn't much I could do, you know, I, I couldn't take, I, I couldn't do very much to get rid of that. I'd think about it, you know, afterwards, but I, I never thought about it much before. So this is, this is expre expressly to stop that annoying noise. Now the, the, there was an earlier version um, that was just a bottle cap and some uh, bubble wrap. And that, that bubble wrap skirt kept the, uh, kept the ring from making any noise. And uh, that was okay. And this cap just lived in the car. And then when the thing would start rattling, rah, 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 and I'd take the cap off and put this one on. Um, it was even a third version. Um, good old, good old bailing wire. And, you know, the, the idea is pretty, pretty simple. This one was kind of interesting because in, uh, <laughs> there was some mid course correction after I realized that once I'd put that on, it's almost impossible to get off. So it has a pull tab, but, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the topic sort of comes to be the material that this is made of. And what, what it kind of feels like, maybe nylon, you know, it's a pretty tough plastic. And the stuff, uh, let's see if I can. Well, okay. See if I can get to the right picture. Jump to your camera screen, though. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I. That's because yes, that's not what I wanted, but that's okay. So this is the material, uh, polycaproactylone, and it comes. It's it's commercially available by many names. Shapelock is the one that you know happened to come up first to me. Um, and it's, it's an interesting material because it, it becomes kind of molten at uh, maybe 150 degrees. And I, I don't want to, you know, do a, a real demo of it. It comes in little pellets and you can just dump them in very hot water and they turn clear and they become, you know, completely moldable. Um, and one of the cool things about it is that it's, you know, completely reusable. You just melt it and um, you melt it down again. This looks like this was some kind of effort to make some holder for, a, I don't know, something. But it just goes back in the bag and it's just there, you know, kind of, kind of ready to use. And so this, um, this anti-rattler was just made of that, just hand formed. And so the material is really pretty cool. Um, one of the other applications of the material is in the medical field. My wife had uh, a couple of fingers broken and there was, I don't know, I don't know where it goes, something. Um, there, is, there is a material available to medical technicians that's the same kind of stuff. You put it in hot sand or something and you can form it 
however you want and um, create clever devices out of it if you need to, you know, put pressure on something. So this is this is the same stuff. Um, it's a nice cheap source of it. But um, let's see if I can get to the right place here. So it turns out that uh, a wee nunchuck, um, this, this sounds like it's not related, but it, as it turns out, it is, um, uh, has an I squared C interface. And this interface um, is not, there's not a standard interface to it. But uh, <clears throat> I took a piece of double-sided copper circuit board and dremeled off to in the right sizes to fit this thing. And there's the, the female that's in the end of the wire to the nunchuck. And you, yeah, I can, I, can plug, I can plug this thing in there, but that's kind of dangerous. So at the space a couple of years ago, um, Andrew was, took some hot water and some of this shape lock and molded around that connector, around the, the male part, and made something that, uh, that made a much more mechanically sound connect connection. This is it. So this is the female <clears throat> and embedded in there is a piece of circuit board. And this is now a, a reasonably good connector and it keeps the thing from um, being mounted the wrong way. I don't know if you remember in the picture that was a side that said notch because the, the thing is symmetric except for this notch. And if you put it in backwards, then it's not good. So by, by molding, I think you can see the notch in, the, in this casing, you know, you, you, you can't put it in the wrong way and you can't put it in the right way. So this was just kind of a, a a useful um, application of this this moldable plastic stuff, um, and it let me have have things have some I squared C interface that could uh, talk to a, a toy controller. So, uh, if you're curious about shape lock, um, let's see. There's been a couple of other things. My uh, my drill press key has been embedded in this stuff for. I don't know, many, many years. Um, it just makes it, it's just a little nicer to hold. Um, what else? Oh, I needed to pry some, some chip out that I had to do a lot of. So I made a little hook, but then I just smushed some shape lock around it to make a nice smooth handle for popping, you know, some memory chip, I don't know what it was, out kind of over and over. And uh, it was one other round. This is uh, my wife's car key fob, and it lives in the bottom bottom of her purse, and that's fine. Until one day we were getting out of the car, and the car just was going crazy. It was just beeping, and the alarm was going off because you know it's got an alarm button, right? Somehow in the bottom of her purse, that had gotten jammed up against something, and so the car alarm was going off and we didn't know that because we don't use the car alarm and um, so that was not cool and it was it took a while to figure out what was making well my car was making all the noise but why was it why was it misbehaving so much so what I wanted was some cover for this that would keep keep this button or any of the buttons from being depressed um, accidentally and so I just took a couple of pieces of, I don't know, thick stuff, cardboard or something, and, and made little uh, overlays over those things and just molded some shape lock around it. And now this, this is how it lives in her purse. And 
ain't nothing going to push the buttons when it when it's not supposed to. And you know, if you if you actually need to get the thing off, yeah, you can do that. So it's just kind of an interesting interesting material that's got lots of uses. Uh, if you're curious about it, um, just just look it up online. Uh, shape lock or polymorph or there's there's a bunch of versions of it and they'll, and they'll tell you all about it that's what i got to say so that must be 150 degrees fahrenheit then yes um, yeah you can handle this stuff that with, was, your, with your bare hands that was where i was going was there's no danger of burning yourself on the boiling water if you if you use boiling water, you know, yes, it melts quicker if you use boiling water. But it doesn't but, need to be quite that warm. No. So there's there's a little bit of brinksmanship. You want it to be hot enough to be nice and flexible and not hot enough to burn you very badly. You're going to have to get some of that and try it. It looks, it looks yeah, it's, interesting. It's, it's pretty good stuff. And it it turns clear when it when it melts. And that's that's the indicator. You know, you look at the stuff and you you know, swirl the water around and, oh, it's getting clear around the edges and, oh, okay, now it's all clear and you just fish it out with a, you know, metal fork or something and, yeah. and then, smush it into what you want. You can roll it out into thin sheets, uh, you know, roll it, roll it between your hands and make, you know, long snakes to whatever you're trying to make out of this stuff. Um, you know why it changes from white to clear? No. So it comes in that little pellet form, and then and so like even when it's wet, you can just squish those pellets together. Correct. Yeah, there's one version of it called friendly plastic that uh, usually comes in sheets, um, 50 mil thick, something like that. Often in interesting colors. So it's you'll find it at at a hobby store, uh, as a crafts craft store, and you can heat it just gently and kind of bend it around, or you can heat it more dramatically and mold it more dramatically. And Jim, you ever, I'm wondering, well, oh, go ahead, Andrew. Well, I was going to ask, if, have you ever tried dyeing it? Um, people do dye it. There, there are dyes that, that work you know, pretty acceptably with it. I do know that it's used a lot in prop building or people who are making replicas of props just because of the um, being able to mold it so easily. Yeah. Um, so this is this is the stuff. The, these are the the common names, and they're all it's all the same stuff. Uh, Professor Braino, uh, he's at one of the other maker spaces, was trying to get a uh, a mass purchase. You know. 55 gallon drum or something of it. <clears throat> I don't think he ever got enough people to share share the expense to do that. But uh, you know, and it's it's not cheap, but it's you know if you use kind of small amounts, it's it's pretty usable. And uh, you know, it, it it won't replace a 3D printer. You're not going to get precision out of it. But man, you get this this clay in your hands, and you can just mold it into whatever you like and. Yeah, for a for a quick prototype or, or a quick mount, if you get some weird shaped motor or something, you can just get some of the stuff and smush it around it and leave yourself out a, a little handle that you can drill a hole through and mount. That's easier prototype uh, stuff. Sorry? Easier than epoxy and easier on your clothes and uh, easier on your clothes. Yeah. And if you had to do more than one part, I could imagine 3D printing a mold, two part, three part. And and using this material, yeah, it, it's moldable. It's um, it's sort of the consistency of clay. Is it machinable? Yes, I have some, but I've never played with it, and I don't know. I got to get it out of its storage container and get it in here where I can see it. Yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty good stuff. It feels the thing. It feels the most like is nylon. Now, this this stuff, the the medical community stuff. Uh, I've tried to reuse this. Yeah, it works, but it this doesn't. It's a slightly different version. Um, but the 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 real the real stuff just 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 molds. You know, molds by hand. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 